Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's a brand new edition of the 20 Minutes Podcast. And again, just uh, want to appreciate everyone for watching and and uh, the feedback. And again, uh, always great to uh, get your thoughts and, and which coaches you want to hear from. Sure. I'll talk to these guys anytime I can, but I uh, always like to find out what guys you would like to hear from. And, and in particular, our next guest was certainly mentioned by more than a few fans that uh, definitely wanted to get to know a little bit and talk about last season and preview 2023 as well. So we will bring him in. He is the head coach of the York Dukes, Mike Fitzgerald. And Fitz, uh, happy Friday, happy cold Friday, but uh, you know what? It's still Friday. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Tom. Um, an amazing season. Before we get into that, um, I had a chance to see you a couple nights ago. Uh, Matt Foster, who uh, has been kind of the overseer of the Red Grange Award the last handful of years, uh, was able to drag me on board to try to help him out a little bit and be a part of it. And we had the pleasure of uh, presenting Matt Veza, the uh, offensive uh, player for the uh, Red Grange Award in, in the halftime of the basketball game, which, by the way, thanks to you and thanks to everybody at York for having us. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we got to start with Veza, right? I mean, kid just signed his letter of intent to New Hampshire. Um, tremendous student, tremendous young man, unbelievable player, had an incredible year for you. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can go on and on and raving about uh, Matt Veza. Yeah, I mean, Matt's the the total package. And, I mean, his results were not a surprise. Just if you watch him work day in and day out, just the way he commits, the way he works, you know, he, he does everything with a high standard and, you know, he knew he was destined for, for great results when, when he prepares like that. So um, obviously had an unbelievable year. He carried us, um, you know, in some games and some tough yards in those playoffs with the weather conditions offensively. We really leaned on him to run the football and he showed the toughness that he has. And that's the thing, like he can throw the ball and he's a great athlete. I mean, he, he was clocked at a four or five in the 40, but yeah. Those intangibles that he has is special. He plays better when the pressure is on. Um, he wants those tight situations, and he really thrives in that. And, again, I think that just stems from the preparation that he puts day in and day out, and his teammates trust him. And, you know, as coaching staff, you you can trust him with, with anything, and you know he's going to get the job done. Yeah, and, and his personality, and, again, I know the kids are calling him Matty Ice, and, you know, I mean, he's just one of those kids, Mike, that, you know, high pressure, low pressure. He never changes. It just seems like he's very, very flat line personality wise. Doesn't get too up. Doesn't get too down. And let's face it. You saw it all year. He was in some really, really high pressure situations and, and just absolutely never flustered whatsoever. Yeah, for sure. That demeanor just never changes. You know, he's just, he doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He just, he literally focuses play by play. And I think that's a, a special thing for, you know, a young man, his age, and it's hard to stay in the moment, but he does a great job with that. And I think that's why he really thrives in those pressure situations. You know, he just, he's completely focused on the task at hand. Yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned his running ability and what he was timed in the 40. Was that, was that me or was, did that start to come out really not until the postseason where he, he really, it just seemed like, his running ability just became another weapon for him in the game plan where maybe, I don't know, you know better than anyone. Was it something that he just didn't have the opportunity to do or didn't need to do? But boy, it just seemed like all of a sudden you watch him take off with the football and that was a dangerous, dangerous kid running with the ball. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we knew he was such a threat in the run game. I mean, he had proved himself junior year, the win against Glenbard West. I mean, he, he rushed for 130 yards his junior year. Um, had a really good performance. And I mean, he does it all the time in practice. It was just one of those things that we had an unbelievable defense. We had a lot of other weapons and, you know, we didn't want to run them too much until we had to. And I think we got in the situation of the playoffs with the weather and the wind and, you know, teams were stacking the box. So we had to, we had to plus one them with the quarterback and yeah. use them, use them a lot more. So he, we always kind of had that in our back pocket. If we need, uh, you know, our four minute offense, if we need to run the clock out tough short yardage situation and then obviously the playoffs with the weather you know it came into play more but we knew the whole time that we could do that and I think another reason you know we didn't have any qualms about running them is we had a great backup quarterback when Sean Winton you know and backup quarterbacks don't get a lot of praise but yep. 
when you can call run play and not feel worried about what happens if this guy gets dinged up, you know, that's, that's a powerful thing as a play caller. And, um, you know, that's a credit to Sean too, just always staying prepared and being ready for it. And, you know, his opportunity didn't come last year, but he would have been ready for it. Um, but I think that was something too, but yeah, Matt, Matt is, uh, dangerous in the run game. I mean, he could have easily rushed for a thousand yeah. yards if we yeah. really wanted to, you know, run him every single game, but we had some great weapons. We had a really good defense and the style of play just, you know, it was working for us. So, you know, we, we didn't have to use him as much as we maybe did his junior year or in years past. I think what, I think what's been exciting about your team the last couple of years is especially, I think last year, I think this year the gap kind of closed a bit, but I mean, let's face it, you guys, you guys kind of played with a chip and, and the, you know, look, we're not Glenbard West and we're not Hinsdale Central. We're just a little old York and we're just going to come in and we're going to beat you. And, and that's what you ended up doing. And, and, and again, I talk all the time about how I think teams take on the personality of their coach. And I think these last couple of years, this team has taken on your personality fits where, you know, you don't talk a lot of smack. You're not a big rah rah guy. You just go out and get the job done. And then once you get it done, then you might have a little smile on your face and take a little enjoyment out of it. But is that fair as far as personality of the team that, you know, hey, they you, your guys know that at times they'll get overlooked in that conference, and it's understandable. I mean, those teams have had incredible success, but it sure seems like the last couple of years you guys have definitely closed that gap. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, beliefs and behaviors. Like the number one thing is you got to believe that you can get it done. You know, it starts there because that's going to help motivate you and push you. But number one, it's behaviors like, you know, talk is cheap. You can you can say you want to be all state. You can say you want to win conference. You can say you want to win a state title. But really, you know, we tell the kids all the time, one is empty. It's always going to come down to your work ethic and commitment. And, you know, the kids have bought in the, the way they work in the off season are, you know, we got 130 kids here in the morning right now. And that just shows that they understand, you know, that that's the most important thing is putting the time in and really preparing yourselves for those, those moments, those key games, those big games, especially in this conference. And, you know, we want to, we want to lead by action and not, you know, with our words. And I think our coaching staff, unbelievably committed, hardworking. And I think the kids sense that and the kids are all in and we've had great leadership from our seniors, you know, the last few years and, and they set the precedent in terms of the way they work and they don't cut corners and those, you know, lower level kids, they see them and it just, it becomes contagious and kind of builds within the program. So, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, we've worked for everything, you know, it's, yep. we, we haven't talked about it. We just, we put the time in and we keep going at it. And I think that's our big thing this year is not getting complacent. And, you know, I think losing that playoff game as much as it, it as much as it hurt, I think that was a, a huge motivator. Um, for this senior group this year, they did not want that feeling again. And yeah. we were in the weight room right away after that. And you could tell they had tunnel vision and they had a sense of focus. And again, the work ethic to match it. And that's the biggest thing. Um, was it important, in, in, in your opinion, was it important to go against the Loyola and to see a Loyola and see the highest level in that 8A class and say, look, this is what it's going to have to take. This is what you're going to have to go against. Um do you feel you had to get to that point where they had to see that then you can take it and move forward from there? Or is that just more smoke than anything? No, I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is obviously being so close to the state championship. I mean, you talk to the kids, you know, when I first got here, like, Hey, this is our goal. This is what we can work. This is what we can accomplish. But again, those are just words. And I think to actually be that close, I think they all know how possible it is now. Like it's not just, some type of dream or vision, but we were right there on the doorstep and, you know, we got there with hard work and it's going to take even more hard work and fine tuning the little details to, to make that next step. So I don't think as much as Loyola, it's just, I think being that close, I think is a real motivating factor for these kids of, Hey, this is possible. Like before it was just, you know, is this just something coaches saying or kids are saying, but now everybody, you know, saw that it can be done and, there's no excuses. I've been a big fan of the West Suburban Silver for a long time. I mean, it's the stability, the coaches, the programs. I mean, there's a lot to like. Fitz, I remember talking in the offseason last year with you, and I just remember saying, hey, man, your, your conference is going to be loaded this year. 
And it really hit me because the last two teams I saw over the summer were Oak Park, River Forest, and Downers North. And after seeing those two and seeing what they had up front, I'm, I'm like, oh, my God, this thing is going to be murderer's row. And it really worked out that way. I mean, yeah, you guys rolled. I mean, perfect 9-0 record in regular season. You win the conference. But let's face it, nothing came easy at all. And, you know, you had – you had two teams at four and five in Hinsdale Central, which almost never happens with them, and then also Oak Park River Forest. And those are two teams, a game here or there, they could also wound up in the playoffs. I, I mean, Mike, I think last year might have been one of the best seasons in a long, long time for the West Suburban Silver. Yeah, there's no question. This is a tough conference, top to bottom. There are no off weeks. I mean, there's no weeks to catch your breath, really, and – I think a lot of people, you know, prior to this year, we had a lot of success in the playoffs, but, you know, people would kind of bash the conference for their playoff performance. And I always, you know, kind of go back to, well, it's hard to get through the season healthy and it's hard to, you know, you really got to have some depth to kind of stay together. Yep. Um, you know, it's such a challenging regular season that when you get to the playoffs, like it, it's got to, you got to have some depth, you got to be healthy and, you know, obviously with the draw and everything, but yeah, the conference is, is unbelievable. And I think that's what really helped us for the playoffs is we had a lot of confidence knowing, you know, who we played in the regular season and, and we knew we could step up to these other teams and, you know, we, we'd be fine just doing what we were doing. Um, and, and again, I, I'm sure every week was a memorable week and every game was a memorable game, but I got to imagine the win at Marist second round had to be pretty special because I was there and I remember, getting there early and seeing your fans already fall in the stands. Now, again, Maris doesn't have the biggest visitor side, but what they did have just, just packed, just filled. I mean, hour and a half. Uh, I think we went through about three seasons of weather and about an hour and a half during yep. that game. Uh, even before the game, I know we had what snow and snow and sleet and something else. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it was crazy cold and, and crazy winds and, and how memorable was that? And was that one of those wins as a program you look at and say, okay, look, this was a big win. We go on the road, we play a, a really tough opponent in Marist, beat them at their place. I got to imagine that's another rung up the ladder for you and your program. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody knows um, the Catholic league and how good they are. And I think being able to go on the road and, and beat a team like that, such a quality program is a huge step for us. And, again, another confidence builder, like, Hey, these things can be done. Um, you know, they're not out of reach and and the things that we're doing, you know, we're doing correctly and just let's stick to what we're doing and increase the the details and, you know, push it even a little further. But, you know, it was definitely a huge game for us. And obviously personally for me, you know, having spent six years at Marist and kind of yeah. building, building the program up there, it was kind of surreal being there on the other side and I'd always be in the box. So that was like the first game I've ever coached yeah. on the field that the, field. Marist, the stands being there. So, you know, kind of seeing, you know, what I did help, helped out there as a coach and then being there on another team, it was just kind of surreal how it all unfolded and um, definitely a special day for me personally. And then obviously our team and our program was, you know, it, it was a, a special day for sure, you know, going up there and getting that win. Yeah. Yeah, I just got it. I just remember how crazy that weather was. And we've seen some crazy days, and that was one of them. I won't forget. Yeah, you so, uh, in warm ups, you're like, you're going to see some things in this game you've never seen before. And yeah, it, it was crazy just watching people yeah. trying to field the punt and even getting the, the shotgun snap from center to quarterback. Yeah, yep. I, I didn't even take that into account. Like, you knew it was going to affect the kicking game, but man, that thing would be moving just in four yards and, yeah. and trying yeah. to field that. Um, yeah, it was. It was something you can't really plan for until you're in it. And I think it's a great experience because if that situation comes in, there's a lot of things like, Hey, remember what we did or didn't do. And we'll learn from that. Um, when you're getting ready for a game like that and you see how the weather conditions are, I mean, I, I got to imagine the first reaction and thought is, okay, what are we going to change? Are we going to, what are we going to do differently? I don't know if it's, I don't think, and you, you could attest to this better than anyone. I didn't think you guys made a whole lot of adjustments versus what you generally would have done anyway. It seemed to me, at least offensively, for sure, you just went out and played your usual game. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's how we're trying to build ourselves, too, is to be ready for playoff weather. I mean, our defense was unbelievable all year. Our defensive yeah. coordinator, Don Gelsimino, does 
an unbelievable job um, preparing our defense week in and week out. And they just played at another level. And, you know, offensively, we we try and, you know, ball control and play to that strength as well and, and utilize our weapons. So, you know, I don't think it it affected too much of what we did. Obviously, you know, throwing the ball certain ways, certain directions. Yeah, maybe a play call here or there. Um, we did decide and I told the kids, I'm like, hey, don't think I'm crazy, but we're going to go for it on fourth down, even if it's on our own 30, just because a punt of 10 yards isn't really going to do us. Right. Any good. Yep. And that kind of played into our play calling, too, is, hey, we got four downs to get 10 instead of three. Um, and our first drive couldn't have been any better. I think we were going into the win, took about yep. eight minutes off the clock, finished with a score. And then our second drive, we were able to get out of a third and 17 and flip the field, get the win for the second quarter. Because if, if we would have had to punt it on the one there, you know, that would have changed everything momentum wise. And so there were some some little things, but nothing drastically different. We we want to kind of prepare ourselves and build ourselves like yep. a playoff football team, being able to, to go in those conditions and do it. I want to ask you a little bit about your background, because I know we talked about this the other night a little bit with Matt Foster, that you are not from the Chicagoland area. You're, you're from uh, the Colorado. Uh, you're from Colorado, I believe. Give us your background a little bit. And as far as your coaching stops since you've been in Illinois, I know that you were a uh, head coach at Wheaton St. Francis for a couple of years. I know you were also at uh, Naperville North with Sean Drendel for a while as offensive coordinator. Give us your background, and then I would like to know, what you were able to learn and kind of take from from those assistant coaching stops before you got to York? Yeah, for sure. So I grew up in Colorado, wanted to play small school football. There's none really out there. So I went to Lake Forest College, um, was there for four years. And then I got into college coaching for four years, went to Carroll University for two, and then came back to Lake Forest College as a full time assistant, um, you know, as the offensive coordinator at a Division three school, probably. 24 years old, had no idea what I was doing, made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so learned a lot by, by, by mistakes and from some of my failures. And then my college roommate, Pat Dunn, got the head job at Marist. Yep. And he talked me into going over to Marist and went there for six years. And that was an unbelievable experience. And then kind of wanted to do my own thing because I didn't think Pat would ever leave and, you know, wanted to kind of challenge myself as a head coach. So had the opportunity at, at St. Francis, you know, I, I applied to some different schools, but when you're in the Catholic school, public schools kind of like, well, you know, you've never done it at a public school. So when you've never been a head coach, yeah. that was kind of being used against me in interviews. So I said, you know what, I just got to get a head coaching job and, you know, went to St. Francis and that was kind of like a perfect storm. My first year there, we had such a great senior class, um, you know, that was really ready and made a run to the semis and, yep. you know, that was a great group of kids. And then, Oh, by the way, in the meantime, Dunn left Barris. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Where you go, where you go, he, Pat? Yeah, he, he didn't tell me that was going to happen. But um, <laughs> and then I had my first kid, so I had to kind of get in the public school sector, and you know, I had the opportunity to join Naperville North and and Sean Drendel, who's an unbelievable guy, and really enjoyed my time there for two years um, as the offensive coordinator, and just kind of got at the itch to to be a head coach again, and you know, saw the opportunity at York and kind of explored it. And I just thought it had really good potential of having their own feeder program, you know, that they don't really share with anybody else at the time. And you could really wrap your arms around that. And, you know, the facilities were unbelievable and, and they had had success in the past. So you knew it could be done. Um, so it just seemed like the right opportunity and decided to take a leap of faith and head over here and, and everything has, has worked out really well. I mean, it's, you know, my first couple of years were tough. Um, you know, we took our lumps, but we, like you said, we, we kept working, we stayed consistent. We didn't make drastic changes. The coaching staff really came together, which was a big part of it. I have unbelievable coaches here. Um, and we got some consistency and just stayed, stayed at it and just kept getting, you know, better and better. And, you know, the kids bought in and, and we're in a good place right now, but yeah, I think my experiences are a little different. I think a lot of guys, right. They get into a high school, they get tenured and, Yep. And and they're there their whole lives and they, you know, that that's a unique experience. But like, you know, I feel lucky and fortunate that I've gotten to experience a lot of different programs, interacted with a lot of different coaches, seen different coaching styles, uh, philosophies, the way they do things. And I think that's really different for most high school coaches on their path. Um, so I think that's really benefited me. I mean, Marist, 
with with Pat Dunn, just the way he inspired those kids and the relationships that he builds. Like I I was coming from college, right? And I was just like football, football, football and schematics and X's and O's. And that's that was my thing. And then you see Pat with the ability to connect with kids and how they would run through a wall for him. You know, I didn't even realize how much I was learning from him at the time. And then when you step away, you realize how special he was at that. Um, always making time for kids. And, you know, that's something I always try and do. He's so, like that with everybody. So. Yeah, for sure. The politician, right? Yep. <laughs> um, you know, and then St. Francis, obviously just first time head coach, that was a learning experience and just kind of the first time doing it. And you start to see all the things that you never heard about as an assistant, man, like, oh my goodness. Like I never, I thought I was prepared, but you're in it. And, and you're like, not. you know, and then going to Naperville North and, and seeing how Sean does things and, Again, another great guy who is really good with kids and builds great relationships, you know, not with just his kids, but his coaching staff. And, yep. you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he is passionate about where he's at and his program, you know, learned a lot from Sean and that staff. And then, you know, again, just coming over here and being able to kind of get a second chance at being a head coach. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, 2023, you mentioned good, good turnout in the weight room so far this winter. Um my understanding is you do have a week two game now. Yeah. Yep. So, so Nazareth Academy in week two, um, great matchup. I mean, you know, relatively close kind of kind of rivalry potential game. And Naz is always strong. They're going to be strong again next year. I, pal, that's a great game for you guys in week two. Yeah, just, you know, the kids are just finding out now. They're super excited. Um, obviously, Coach Racky has done an unbelievable job with that program. And obviously, when I was at Maris, you know, I had some battles with them. And then even at St. Francis, um, you know, so I'm very familiar with Naz. And, you know, for us to have that type of competition, I think before our conference schedule will, will be a huge thing for us getting us ready. And like you said, I think it's going to be a great environment. I think they're close by. Um, competition's going to be really good. We were actually originally going to play IC, um, and then they entered the Catholic League and right. kind, of, kind of bailed. Everything. Yeah, kind of bailed on us. So we were we were scrambling, and Naz was looking, and so it kind of all all worked out for us. And um, yeah, we're really excited about that game, and and again, taking on a great program. And again, week one, I believe you got Glenbrook South again, which again, you, th there's another program that yeah. year in and year out. They're a playoff team, and, and David's done a really nice job with them. So that's no gimme either. That's a really good yeah, game. Yeah. What can we expect out of, out of 2023? How big is it? How big are the graduation losses? Starter wise, what do you think you got coming back for next year? Yeah, I mean, we're going to lose um, quite a few starters and seniors, um, but we have a very talented junior class, and they were a big part of our success this year. And They've had a lot of success at York, too. I mean, the, the first loss that they had at York was the Loyola game. So they've done really well at the lower levels. A lot of them got a lot of playing time last year, either as starters or in the rotation. So, you know, we feel very confident that, you know, those kids that, that weren't starters last year are going to step up and be ready for their time. And obviously with the returners, they're going to take on that that lead of the experience and the veteran and helping those younger guys and those juniors come up and, you um, I'm really excited about the, the group we have coming forward as well. Excellent. Well, hey, I, I could keep you for an hour and a half doing this, but I know you got yeah. the rest of your day, so I'm going to cut you loose. But, uh, again, just thanks again. Congratulations on a great year, and uh, we'll definitely talk again soon, Fitz. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for everything you do for, for high school football. We appreciate you. Glad to do it, bud. All right.